Have you ever kept goldfish as pets? They're very cute. <laughs> everyone. We're looking to wrap with our two main ladies today. I can already smell our success. <laughs> what do you mean, looking to wrap? Oh, aren't you the expert now? This upcoming scene is the two musketeers' final confrontation with the Baron. There will be quite a bit of action, but no choreography beyond what we've already rehearsed. Anyway, get ready! Lights! Camera! Action! The view is beautiful tonight. It reminds me of that fateful night ten years ago. Hmm, and now that I've said it, I can even make out the faint fragrance of herbal tea in the air. Enough, villain! It's time that you pay for the death of our mother! My dear Iris, have you forgotten your manners? How can you speak like this to your own father? <sighs> I'd sooner swallow all of my teeth than call you father! What did I expect? Seems the daughters have turned out to be just as obstinate as their foolish mother! In this world, Mora and status is everything! She thought she could blackmail me using her children and force me to grant her recognition and concessions? Ah, how naive can a woman be? Mother never asked a single thing of you. All she wished was for us to live a peaceful life, just like the others. It was you who personally brewed the poison of prejudice and sent Mother to her death. Compared to that deadly poison, the two bullets that will soon pierce through your heart will be like sweet mercy. <laughs> and that's exactly why I said you're just as naive as her. Did you really think two muskets would be enough to defeat me? So let's see. What is stronger, Mora and Power, or the two muskets in your hands? Get them! Too leap! There are too many of them! It'll be okay. We'll cover each other, Iris. And Mother will be watching over us, too. You've lost. <sighs> to think I'd lose to my own two kids. We are no children of yours. And we'll never call that place our home. <laughs> then tell me, what did you do all this for? You lost your mother, and will soon kill your father as well. 
What will you gain in the end, other than sentences for your crimes? We will gain our long-awaited justice. <sighs> it's over. <sighs> Finally, it's over. So, where will you go now, Tulip? I'm not too sure, Iris. Maybe somewhere with lots of flowers? After all, Mother always did love going where the blossoms were. What about you? I... want to go visit Mother's grave. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Huh? Tulip, look! What is it? It's Mother's favorite! The Rainbow Rose! Look! It's blooming again! Excellent! That was beyond mesmerizing! <laughs> Even I didn't expect the scene to go so well. And we got it in a single take! <laughs> Alright, everyone! We've got a wrap for Tulip and Iris. Congratulations, Ayaka and Chevrois! Thank you. I didn't expect our parts to wrap so quickly. I wish I could savor the experience for just a bit longer. <laughs> Paimon totally understands. Paimon's not ready to say goodbye to the clapperboard either. Filming has really been a lot of fun. You were great too, Chevrois! The way you said, long-awaited justice, it gave by my chills! That is indeed my favorite line in the whole book. I still remember trying to act it out in my room the first few times I read it. Whoa, Hyman would have never guessed you're that type. Who doesn't like stories where the guilty are punished and justice prevails over evil? Don't forget, I'm the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. Captain, I have something urgent to report. Please excuse me, everyone. I'll be back in just a moment. It's okay, don't worry about us! Oh? Was she whisked away by work already? Mm, I was just about to tell her how great she did. It seemed like some urgent official business. Uh, then perhaps we should thank the stars that we were able to wrap both of your parts so quickly today. Switching around the filming schedule would have been a real pain. Anyway, I actually came over to let everyone know that we're all done for today. You can go home and get some rest. And one last thing, Miss Ayaka. Your acting skills today were immaculate as always. Are you sure you won't consider taking up full-time acting? See, I just happen to know this great troupe that's still looking for a lead actress. Thank you for your kind words, Director Farina. Unfortunately, there are still many matters that I have to take care of back home at the Yashiro Commission. I cannot remain in Fontaine to pursue an acting career. Nevertheless, I will make sure to treasure this incredible opportunity in my heart. Oh, that's a shame. But I understand. Just let me know if you ever change your mind. I believe it's also about time for me to take my leave. But hopefully I'll see you on set over the next few days. Even though my part's wrapped, I'd still like to swing by and help out the crew. See you tomorrow, Traveler and Paimon. What should we do next? Maybe we'll go investigate the case some more with Chevrons today. Traveler, Paimon, please come with me. Huh? W where are we going? You could say that our ship has finally chanced upon one of those small remote islands of intel.
Exhausted. Paimon definitely didn't expect having to float this far after a full day of filming. So, Chevres, why did you take us here? Affirmative. It wasn't anything conclusive, but it should show us a clear way forward. Have you ever heard of someone by the name of Emily? Oh, you mean that famous perfumer? She's a good friend of mine. She's lent me her aid several times in the past to resolve some difficult cases. After I discovered the rainbow rose at the scene of the murder, I sent it to her. After all, she's probably the foremost expert on flowers and scents in all of Fontaine. And then? There was nothing remarkable about the flower or the trace amounts of soil left on it. But according to Emily, the rainbow rose left by the killer was derived from a very rare cultivar. didn't know that there were different varieties of Rainbow Rose. Paimon just thought they grew everywhere in the wild. Flowers that are deliberately cultivated will always show some different features from those that bloom in the wild. We already knew that the rose left at the scene belonged to a special cultivar, but with Emily's expertise, we were able to pinpoint the place where it was first picked from. Oh, Paimon gets it now. So whoever first planted that rainbow rose was probably the killer! Precisely. And after we checked what we learned against some sales records from the past, we discovered that there's only one person in all of Fontaine who could grow and sell this specific cultivar. Uh, really? And who is it? <sighs> it's the novelist. But didn't you say he had an alibi? To be clear, I haven't changed my mind about him. I still don't think he was the one who pulled the trigger. However, that doesn't mean the true culprit never visited him at his home or never purchased a rainbow rose from his garden. Whatever the case, we will have to confirm a number of things with him. So you mean the next place we need to go is... Yes, we're going to pay him a visit at his home. That should be his house. There are so many Gardamex stationed around the place. Uh, that's pretty unusual, right? According to what he told me last time we spoke, he hired them so he won't be harassed or disturbed. Huh. So there are a lot of flowers in his garden, but... Paimon doesn't think we'll be able to pick one without alerting the Gardamex. Right. Which is exactly why I think there has to be a special connection between him and the killer. So... should we knock? Just wait here for now. I'd like to take care of a number of those Gardamex first. But they're so far away! How are you planning to do that? Don't forget, Paimon. I'm actually the real-life captain of the Musketeers. <laughs> Thank you. 
All clear. Let's go. Wait, wait, wait! Paima's a little nervous now that we know he could be the killer. <laughs> Can we go over our plan of action again? I'll go knock on the door and make sure it's safe inside. Once we're sure that we're in the clear, I'll ask him to come with us for a quick round of questioning at the guard's headquarters. But can't we just arrest him? We still have no evidence that he's the killer, or that he lent the killer any direct aid. Still, it would be appreciated if you could pick a rainbow rose from his garden for me while I'm talking to him. It'll help the Marashose Phantom confirm Emily's theory. Sure, no problem. Just be careful, Chevras. Excuse me, Mr. Baptiste, are you home? Who could it be at this hour? Oh, it's you, Officer Chavras. Would you mind accompanying me to the guard's headquarters, Mr. Baptiste? We would like to ask you some questions about a case. Oh, is it still regarding the murder case from before? I cannot confirm or deny that at this time. So it is then. Listen. I need you to come with me, Mr. Baptiste. Uh, Miss Chavras, I'll save you the trouble. Oh, and you two over there? There's no need for you to pick my flowers either. It's not time for them to bloom yet. Oh! Uh, okay. By saving me the trouble, you mean... I will confess, I was the killer. Huh? He... he just admitted he's guilty! Please relax, everyone. I'm not armed. The musket you're looking for has been buried in my backyard. Then it's my responsibility to inform you, Mr. Baptiste, that everything you say right now will be used as evidence for the inevitable trial. Yes, I am perfectly aware of that. I must say, I hate this feeling. Oh? Is it because I confessed, or because you've been proven wrong? Both, I suppose. For the same reason as the one I wrote out in my novel, of course. I did it to exact revenge. Hmm. I know you haven't figured out the link between the two of us. Had you done so, I'd have been taken away to the headquarters a long time ago. But that won't stop me from always remembering his grotesque face. After all, he was the one who killed my mother. Your mother is still healthy and well. You know, I was adopted as a child. I was referring to my birth mother. That was never recorded in the orphanage's records. Please forgive a six-year-old child for concocting some lies to protect himself after watching his mother die right in front of him. So, your novel, it was like a record of your life? No, of course not. It was a work of fiction with many embellished parts. But, I am indeed the illegitimate son of a wealthy and influential man who abused his power to murder my mother. That part was a hundred percent real. But the man you killed didn't have a mora to his name. He was a hired assassin. An irredeemable beast who sank his fangs into a defenseless woman just for a few bags of mora. But if that's really the truth, you wouldn't be telling us any of this now. You still haven't managed to take revenge against your father, the true mastermind behind it all. <laughs> 
I never thought I'd hear that kind of thing from the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. I'm simply skeptical about your motives. It's simple, really. I've grown tired of everything and don't want to shoulder this burden anymore. You may have considered me too soft to pull the trigger. Well, as it turns out, you are exactly right. I've become overwhelmed by the aftermath of the murder. So you're going to call a stop to your revenge, just like that? The true mastermind is too rich and too powerful for me. I've accepted that I will never be able to avenge my mother alone. And so what? The characters in your book never gave up. Now, Officer Shavras, I'm the one who has killed a man, aren't I? Are you trying to convince me to commit another crime? What's your father's name? How do you plan to prove the veracity of all of your claims? Well, <clears throat> I'd like to speak with you privately. Sure. Why don't we speak privately at the guard's headquarters? No, it has to be here. I must ensure that we won't be overheard. <sighs> Fine. Let's talk here. When I said, won't be overheard, I meant by anyone. I would like to speak with you and you alone. Thanks. I appreciate it. Please stay safe, Shivers. All right. Let's hear it. Will you really believe what I'm about to say? Well, that depends on what you're going to tell me. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Then listen closely. Hmm. So that's how it's all connected. So, it seems you believe me after all. Do you want me to go public with this? No, of course not. At least, not right now. Then why did you bother telling me? You've read my work. What do you think? Uh... Even if you were to go public with all of this right now, he'd simply deny everything. It's been too long. Almost 20 years. Anything that could be used as evidence has long faded away. Even if there might have been a solitary island of truth once upon a time, it has long sunk beneath the waves by now. Justice will never find him. Not if you don't try. I know that as the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol, you will always stand on the side of justice. But... Do you really think a cushy life in prison really constitutes justice for him? I bet he could lead an extremely comfortable life in the Fortress of Meripede. What are you trying to say? I've been observing you from a distance. Your portrayal of the Musketeer was exquisite. Pull the trigger of justice against him. Let the villain get what he deserves. You want me to let you go so you may complete your revenge? No, Officer Shavras. I know that would be impossible. No. What I'd like is for you to perform the deed on my behalf. Oh, Shavras sure is taking her time. What could they be talking about anyway? Oh, Paimon's worried. What if he decided to attack her? Oh, uh, you do have a point. Still, do you have any idea who the rich person might be? And why the novelist doesn't want us to hear what he's saying to Chevres? Sorry to keep you waiting, you two. Hey, how did your talk go? I've already sent someone to escort Baptiste back to the headquarters for questioning. He wasn't lying about the musket. It was indeed buried in his backyard. But what about the name? Did he tell you the name of the rich guy? Yes, he did. But for now, I have to return to the Special Patrol. There are still a few loose ends I need to tie up.
I'll probably be quite busy over the next few days, so apologies if you don't see me on set. All right, Paimon understands if you can't tell us everything you know. We'll just keep an eye on the Steambird then. Actually, there's still something else I need your help with. to do. Huck and I were just talking about you. Is Shefras still not joining us today? Uh, probably not. We haven't seen her either. Huh? That, that's such a pity. Director Farina said that we've only got a few small scenes left before wrapping up the entire thing. She even said that she'll get me to a couple scenes, so everyone will have a chance to shine in front of the camera. We were also planning on having a victory feast once we're all finished filming. You can join us, right? Mm, if only Chevros was here. I still haven't taken a photo with her. <sighs> I'm afraid that can't be helped. Those special patrol folks are like phantoms when they've got a case on their hands. But to be honest, I'm even more concerned by what I read in the Steambird earlier this morning. It said that the killer in the murder case was none other than the author of the Two Musketeers. Oh, yeah, I heard about that, too. He came forward and confessed his crimes, but gave no explanation as to why he pulled the trigger. We didn't know about this case at all when we joined the film. Is it going to affect the reception of our work? 
From a pure publicity standpoint, this will draw a lot more attention to our film. Uh, I have to say, though, that no director can be perfectly comfortable with garnering attention through means other than artistic skill. To be fair, I feel like that ship sailed the moment you allowed yourself to be named as the director on our posters. It's not my fault that I'm super popular. What was that saying again? My popularity has... Uh... Sunk to an all-time low? Spread to the four corners of Tavat! <laughs> Uh, excuse me, everyone. Xavier! Feels like it's been ages since we last saw you. I've been talking non-stop with the Film Association, and I'm absolutely swamped trying to coordinate the film's marketing. So forgive me for not being around more often, but please believe me when I say that I will make sure everyone's hard work gets the exposure it deserves. Oh, seems like you've been fighting your own battles. <laughs> yes, that's one way to put it. Oh, and before we begin the final round of filming, please allow me to finally introduce you to the original investor of our film, Mr. Morris. Um, a pleasure to meet you all. Yes, glad to make your acquaintance, Mr. Morris. We've heard about the issues you've encountered with your financial situation, and genuinely hope that things have taken a turn for the better. Oh, well, uh, the situation has, uh, indeed improved somewhat. Don't worry, Mr. Morris. Accidents and last-minute challenges happen all the time. There's no need to blame yourself over it. The good news is that we're almost done filming now, and I would even say that this is the best story I've ever seen! Is that so? I see, that's, that's, that's great news. All right, now that we've gotten all the pleasantries out of the way, let's get the show on the road. We'll mostly be filming typical people and scenery from the streets today to improve the sense of environmental ambiance in some parts of the film. Oh, <laughs> and there'll be a cameo for Mr. Kamisato and Miss Yoimiya as well. They'll be used to show outsider perspectives on the fates of the two musketeers. That's right. Ayato should be here any minute. Excellent! Then let's start with the scenery shots. Camera and clapper loader, you're up. Yep, we'll be ready! Remember, all we need are some wide zoom shots of the streets. If you happen to find some particularly lovely patches of flowers and grass, feel free to grab some close-ups of those as well. Ready? Lights! Camera! Action! Okay, now move the camera slowly. Uh, try to focus on that flower. Hmm? What's wrong? Just adjust the focal length a bit. Something the matter? Uh, huh? But wasn't it working fine for all the days before? Veronique, can we try a different camera? No problem. How about this one? All right, let's give it another try. Lights! Camera! Action! <laughs> Don't tell me. This one is broken too. Veronique, do we have any other spare ones we can use? Um, mm, I'm afraid we only brought these two today. What? Then go find a workshop to get them repaired right away! Oh, and you too, Bono! Go find our spare camera in the warehouse and bring it back to the set! On it. Greetings, everyone. My apologies for the delay. Hmm? 
Is something the matter, Ayaka? It seems like there are some issues with the filming equipment today. We're stuck for the moment. I see. Well, let's not just stand here twiddling our thumbs. Actors to the makeup booth. We'll start on the next scene as soon as we get a working camera. The people at the workshop told me that the part which holds the lens in place seemed to have fallen off. That's super strange. It was perfectly fine just yesterday. Well, no time to dwell on that now. Let's get back to filming. Ahem! Quiet on set! Places, everyone! Lights! Camera! Action! By the way, have you heard about that recent murder case? Hmm, yes, I have. It seems that they've caused quite the commotion in the city. I heard that the Chief of the Guards is so mad about not catching the culprit that he's about to explode! Oh? I find that quite hard to imagine, considering how he already looks most days. Director! Director! We have a problem! Oh, we're in the middle of a take! Couldn't you wait until we wrapped up this scene? No, Director. Our film... All the finalized film that we've been keeping in the case has disappeared! Oh wait, well, what did you say? <gasps> Mr. Bono, please take me to where the film was kept right away. I'm coming too. No, Yoimiya, you have to stay here. Oh. Okay, listen up. Everyone who's not working on this current scene can go with Bono to look for the film. Everyone else... Stay put and wrap up the scene. Unbelievable. How could all these problems happen in just one day? We're back. How did it go? Did you find the film? We found it in the sewers. Huh? In the sewers? Is the film still okay? We discovered it just in time, so we should still be able to salvage it. The others are checking now to see if we lost any specific scenes. Oh, you scared me for a moment there! I nearly thought we had lost everything! I really don't want to experience that feeling of despair again. Okay, but who could have stolen the film and dumped it there? Um... Could it be uh, some competitors working on other films? But if they wanted to harass us, why wait until the last day? Hmm. Okay, we don't have time to really look into it right now. Let's strike while the iron is still hot and wrap this thing up once and for all. Yeah, let's finish it. I would like to officially announce that our entry to the festival, The Two Musketeers, has now concluded filming! Ugh, <laughs> uh, Paimon is spent. It's so late already. Even though the filming process proved to be extremely challenging, everyone provided valuable and unique contributions to the final product, Thank you all for your dedication and support! And just like Director Farina, I would also like to extend my most heartfelt thanks to all of you. Really, you've all helped me so much. I just... Alright, alright, let's save the awards speech for later, and hopefully also get some rehearsals in before the real thing. Anyway, now it's time to party! <laughs> Let's all make our way to the beach and have a celebration feast so loud and fun that even the blubber beast will want in! <laughs>
Everything went rather smoothly. Thank you for your concern. Ayato told me that we've already confirmed the dates for some Inazuma Fontaine cultural exchange events. So the next time we visit, we'll be doing so in our capacities as the representatives of the Yashiro Commission. Oh, that's great! Then maybe Paimon will be able to find Fontaine detective novels in Inazuma from now on! Oh, wait. Wouldn't Yaimiko get upset if that happens? That would be stealing some of her business. Ah, you've got a point. She's always complaining that light novels have become bland and too predictable, after all. The cultural exchange won't only feature literatures of both nations, of course. We have also made plans for cross-cultural engagements in the fields of gourmet cuisine, uh, toy making, and artisan craftsmanship. Wow, Paimon's getting super excited now! When the time comes, be sure to visit and participate in all the events. Clapper loader and camera operator, you've both worked really hard. Paimon thinks you worked even harder than us. Honestly, Paimon was getting a little tired of playing with the clapperboard by the end of it. Worst of all, Paimon started having dreams of you shouting, Lights! Camera! Action! into Paimon's ears. The actual dream can't even start until you've yelled that. Uh, hey, if anything, shouldn't I be more grand and delightful than your dreams? <laughs> We've been through so much together, and that's how your brain remembers me? Uh, that, that's not Paimon's fault. We've just used the clapper board too much lately. Anyway, what's most important is that we wrapped the film. I'm pretty confident that we'll take first prize. <laughs> Hey, no need to mention the official name. <laughs> Wait, now that you mention it, if we did win the prize, would Farina just get a statue of herself? Uh, come on, I don't need that kind of attention. Xavier can accept the reward on our behalf. But just imagine! Farina accepting the Farina Award and holding a Farina statue. Uh, I'm going back to my dessert now. You all can keep discussing that on your own. Chiori! Hey, you two. Are you not really into these kinds of big social occasions? Uh, not particularly. But this is still better than Fontaine Fashion Week. <laughs> but if this film becomes a big hit, people will definitely come flocking to your shop. Yes, that's highly likely. As long as the film can premiere as planned. Are you still worried about the case? That and all the obstacles we had to face today. You're right. It's as if all our bad luck just manifested at once. But why today of all days? Hmm? No. No, it's nothing. We've already delivered the film to the editors, so there should be nothing more to worry about. How are you doing, Mr. Morris? You having a good time? Well, you could say that. Uh, do you happen to know when the party is scheduled to end? <laughs> Judging by how much fun everyone's having, I'd say probably not until well after midnight. Is there something that you still have to take care of at home, Mr. Morris? Oh, well, uh, I'm just not a late night person, so I might take off shortly. Oh no! Uh, silly me! I almost forgot something super important. Oh, uh, what is it? I prepared a whole batch of fireworks for the party, but I forgot to bring them over from the warehouse. Fireworks, you say? Well, that's, uh, truly a pity. Sorry things didn't go as planned. Could you help me carry them over, Mr. Morris? I won't be able to fetch all of them by myself. Me? Uh, uh, are you sure that you can't find anyone else? <laughs> I 
just wanted to make this surprise for everyone. The warehouse isn't far from here. We'll be there in no time. I'm pretty pleased, Mr. Morris. These are some of the best fireworks I've ever made. So I also want you to see them before you leave. They're stunning. I promise that they'll be a once-in-a-lifetime experience that you'll never forget. Uh, but... It's okay. Just come with me. If we're sneaky enough, nobody else will see us leaving. <sighs> All right. The warehouse is right over here. I moved the fireworks there in advance, so it shouldn't be too much work bringing them back. Uh, it's still a ways away from the party. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mr. Morris. It's probably because I'm used to carrying fireworks all the time, so it doesn't feel like a lot of work to me. It's dark in here. Oh, wait here, Mr. Morris. I think the light switch should be somewhere uh, here. Uh, why did I have to get roped into this? Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, uh, who's there? Get me out! Get me out of here! Did you really think you'd get away, Morris? Uh, uh, It wasn't me! I, I, I'm not the killer! <laughs> you know, Eliza died a far more heroic death than this. She fought your assassin to the end, to save the children she had hidden beneath the floorboards. <laughs> that is Eliza's pendant. The one with a photo of you two inside. The one you gave her. Ring any bells? It's a fake! It has to be! There's no way! No way your assassin didn't destroy it, you mean? <laughs> Did you ever love her, Morris? Or was killing her always the plan? No, 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 please! Listen to me! I told Eliza to keep us a secret! I paid her plenty for her silence! I never thought she'd keep the child! Everything was gonna come out, and I had no choice! She forced my hand! No! I'm begging you. I have money. Just, just name your price, please! You can keep your mora, and you can go to hell. <laughs> I'm Captain Shavraz of the Special Patrol. Morris, you're under arrest for Eliza's murder. Huh? <laughs> You're under arrest too, Prop Manager Veronique. Or perhaps I should call you the Second Musketeer. Drop the gun, Veronique. Why? Why would you keep me from exacting revenge on this heartless monster? Drop your weapon. This is my final warning. <sighs> what? What is going on? 
Do I have to spell it out for you, Morris? Everything that took place just now was staged to get you to confess the truth. But this last part is all improv, of course. <sighs> uh, Shivers, you told us you wanted us to help you stage a play. You never said anything about the second musketeer! It's because even I had no way to confirm my theory until now. Thank you for your performance, Yoimiya. Could I trouble you to go and bring in the other special patrol members? They should be on standby just outside. Oh, and please tell the other cast members not to worry about us. We'll be rejoining them shortly. On it! So what do you think, Morris? Care to talk about what happened 20 years ago? <laughs> My patience is limited, you know. Don't force me to take you back to the interrogation room. I'd wager that you wouldn't last for more than a minute in there. With the recording we made, you have no chance of winning in court. Cooperating with us now is the most practical move. All right. I'll talk. I hired an assassin to murder Elisa. She once worked as a maid on my family's estate. She was very beautiful, and after some time I fell for her. We kept our relationship a secret and carried out an affair for some time, but it wasn't long before she became pregnant. And if my parents ever found out, they would have stripped me of my inheritance and status, driven me out of my home. I also didn't expect Elisa to insist on bringing the pregnancy to term. She even asked me to leave my family and travel far, far away with her. She believed that you were truly in love with her. I didn't have a choice. I gave her a large sum of Mora, told her to leave the family and to get rid of the baby. But then years later, she sent me a letter that there were photos of two children and she even asked if I could find some time to visit them. Huh? Two children? Paimon thought Baptiste was the only... Uh, you mean... Even if she had the children against your will, you could have just ignored the letter entirely. Why kill her? I had just gotten engaged to be married to an heiress from another wealthy family. So if anyone were to find out about Elisa, my life would be completely ruined. I didn't have a choice. No, you always had a choice. You just made the wrong choice. Again. <sighs> Do you know how it feels to watch your mother be killed right in front of you? My brother and I were hardly even school age yet. We were hidden beneath the floorboards, grasping each other's hands like a lifeline. We were so terrified that we didn't even know we could ever take a breath. All we could do was to watch Mother try to fight back and then collapse to the floor. Even after the assassin left, we were still too terrified to leave our hiding spot. We thought that he might come back. It was only until the next evening when we finally climbed out and gathered around our mother. But she had already become cold and stiff to the touch. You made up your mind right then and there to bring this case to light. Not only that, we resolved to get our revenge. And that's why you became the Musketeers. No, that's why I became a Musketeer. The man from before was also killed by me. My brother had nothing to do with it. I figured as much. Uh, you did? I once told these two that he didn't look like a killer to me. His confession from that night also rubbed me the wrong way. I think what really tipped me off was, how could I not feel a sense of regret in him? Huh? He confessed faster than any criminal I've ever met, but he didn't say a single word about you. He insisted that he was the sole perpetrator in the case. But after the questioning ended, I disassembled the musket we dug up from his backyard, put it in front of him, and told him to reassemble it. Wanna guess how far he got? <laughs> he had no idea where to even start. 
He's never touched a gun in his life. Based on that, I determined that he was not acting alone. He only surrendered himself to draw our attention and create a moment of opportunity for his partner. So, I decided to play along. And as expected, the second musketeer followed us without hesitation once she saw Morris get separated from the rest of the cast. Besides, why else would he call the novel The Two Musketeers? But how did you know it was Veronique? I figured it out the moment Baptiste told me his father's name. That so-called financial crisis was all just a ruse. He just wanted to sign up as the investor and then leave the film without any source of funding. After all, he has a vested interest in minimizing the reach of this story. It's really just the same thing as what he did to Elisa all those years ago. Human scum. But then Xavier pulled out all the stops and got the film made against all odds. Morris couldn't have that. With the killer in custody, he figured it was safe to act. And so he came to visit the set today, just as I expected. Wait, so you were behind all those mishaps today? <gasps> as for the identity of the second musketeer, I assumed they'd probably stay close to Morris and look for an opening. And if they already knew that Morris was the film's investor, then that narrowed the list of potential suspects as well. Furthermore, being the props manager would allow the culprit to avoid scrutiny by purchasing mechanical parts in the name of the crew. With that hypothesis in mind, I went back to check Baptiste's orphanage adoption records. Guess whose name I saw on the same page, just a few lines from his. <sighs> My brother. He trusted you. <laughs> As in he trusted me to perform the deed on his behalf? He trusted you to stand on the side of justice. I am. I thought you could do it as well. Oh, the look on your face when you told him to go to hell. I really thought you'd put a bullet in his brain. <sighs> you know what he has done. Are you telling me that you'd rather see him spend the rest of his life living like a king in the fortress of Meripede? I will never be able to forget the feeling of my mother's cold, lifeless hands. And you would call this ending fair? Is this what you call justice? I won't lie, Veronique. I did hesitate when your brother first told me about the truth. I wondered. I agonized over whether I should really put a bullet in his head. So why don't you? Because that should never be how justice is carried out in this world. Perhaps, to you, justice is simply reciprocated. An eye for an eye, and a life for a life. But everyone has their own understanding of justice. If everyone were to pursue their own definition of it, there would be no more order in this world. Today, you'll kill Morris, and tomorrow, his children may come for you. The world cannot render judgments based on a desire for revenge. That will only lead to a cycle of revenge, as well as the destruction of order and civilized society. Fontaine is founded on a set of laws and a standardized code of justice. That is why we are the nation of justice. But with all that said, I will promise you this. Morris will not lead a cushy life in the fortress of Meripede. Shavros, the rest of the special patrol is here. Thank you so much, Yoimiya. L'Atelier, Terena, please take them away. I still can't agree with your reasoning. I know. Justice has not been delivered. At least, not today. <sighs> Chevres. Let's go. We should give an explanation to the crew. Thank you for your concern. I'm fine. I'm just thinking about the things in life that have driven people to take justice into their own hands. Oh, 
Who would have thought Morris would turn out to be... Uh, I'm at a loss of words. How could he have done something like this? I'm just glad that you're all safe and sound. Who knew that such a labyrinth of cases would be behind this story? Well, what should we do now? We have a finished film, of course, but should we still go ahead with the premiere? What do you mean? Shouldn't you be even more motivated to spread the word now that you've learned the truth? Chiori is right. I'd also like more people to see this story for themselves. But the real ending of the story seems to have deviated somewhat from the one in the script. Is that still acceptable to you, Miss Chevrus? Mm. The call is yours. We still have time to reshoot an ending if that's what you'd like. No, it's fine as is. I like what we have for the catharsis. Romanticism is what gives works of art their appeal. Fiction is able to explore means of restitution that could never work in real life. Just like the real world, the world of stories also has its own set of rules and justice. These different possibilities are what initially drew me to reading in the first place. Sounds good to me. I support your decision. What about Veronique? Will she be okay? She will soon face her judgment alongside her brother and Morris. If I had to guess, they'll probably all be sent to the Fortress of Meripede. I'll make sure to give Risley a heads up about it. Oh, you mean that kind of heads up? Exactly. Ahem! All right, then the matter's settled. Now that everything's been taken care of, there's no reason for us to keep looking all gloomy and grumpy. Let's get back to the feast and enjoy each other's company. We'll be starting the post-production process tomorrow. You should join us, Chevrus. You missed the first few hours of the party, didn't you? All right. Count me in. Then I'll wait for you over there. There's still some good news that I'd like to share with Chevrus. Traveler, Paimon, could you wait for me by the sea after the party ends? I'd like to go on a brief walk with the two of you. Thank you very much. Sorry for the wait. Oh, we weren't waiting long at all. Is there something else you wanted to tell us? No, I don't have anything new to share. I just felt that, since you were my investigation partners, I should have another conversation with the two of you. Uh... Traveler, how would you have responded to Baptiste's request if you were in my shoes? Just like the protagonist of the story, huh? Can't say it doesn't suit you. When I was young, my father often took me here to swim. We'd come rain or shine, even when it was freezing cold. He told me that swimming was the best activity to train one's strength of will. You could never give up before reaching the shore, especially when the water was cold. Oh? Why is that? Because the moment you give up would be the moment you die. At that point, I still hadn't received my vision. One winter, the chilly wind felt almost like knives on my skin, and the seawater was so frigid that it numbed my toes the moment I stepped in. I cried and begged my father to spare me from having to swim across, but he wouldn't listen. He used to be a member of the Special Patrol as well. You could say it was his way of educating his children. That sounds awful. When he saw that I wouldn't stop crying, he just picked me up and tossed me into the icy water. The bone-chilling cold took away my senses. I couldn't feel anything but fear and rage. I waited for my father to save me, but one look and I knew he'd already started swimming for the opposite shore. I realized that if I were to give up, I really would die right then and there. I used all of my strength to try and catch up to my father. Those few minutes felt longer than my whole life up until that point. 
I did, however, make it to the other side. I've never felt afraid about anything in my life after that. Nor have I ever cried again. That way of teaching would have never worked on Paimon. Yeah, I don't think that was the right method for anyone. It's just that working now as I am in the pursuit of justice, I still sometimes feel like I've been tossed into that winter sea all over again. The anger and the helplessness. Shivers. But the worse I feel, the more I know to never give up. The alternative would be to forever lose myself among the waves. Anyway, how about a race? Neither of us will drown, but we can still see who swims faster. Uh, you guys go ahead! Paimon will grab the clapperboard to mark the start of the race! Sorry for the wait. Oh, we weren't waiting long at all. No, I don't have anything... Uh, traveler. How would you have responded when I was young? My father, he told me that sw Oh? Because the moment you... One winter, I cried and begged... That sounds... When he saw that I wouldn't... The bone chilling... I waited for... I used all of... I've never felt afraid about anything... That way of teaching... Yeah, I don't think that was the right... It's just that... Working now as I am in the pursuit of justice... Shiver. But the worse I feel. Anyway, how about a race? Neither of uh... <laughs> Oh, that felt good. You were so fast in the water, Chevras! You were swimming even faster than Paimon could fly! Uh, so, about the special patrol. Did you join because of your dad? Partly, but I'd say I was more inspired by the heroes I read about in stories growing up. Oh, so it's due to your love of stories! Of course. It was only after I joined the Special Patrol that I learned that truth is often stranger than fiction. Come on, let's walk a bit more. To be honest, I do sometimes question whether the decisions I make are the right ones. But I know that no matter what, I must keep swimming because the only thing I've got my eyes on is the shore in the distance. Thank you for coming on this walk with me. I feel a lot better after getting all that off my chest. Huh, we're nearly back at Baptiste's house. Huh, you're right. I didn't realize we were so close. He really did plant a lot of flowers. It's just like how he described it in the story. Huh? <gasps> Wait. Paimon, Traveler, look! The rainbow roses in the garden. They're in full bloom now.
Even though it's a bit late, I must thank you for investigating this case with me. Not on behalf of the Special Patrol this time. It's a personal expression of gratitude from yours truly. Oh, you want to hear more about my father? To be honest, I didn't spend that much time with him. He was always busy with the Special Patrol, so he would often return home really late at night. Some nights, he didn't come home at all. Once, he didn't come home for a long time, maybe a whole week or so. When I went out to buy food, I learned that he had become a criminal, and by extension, that made me a criminal's daughter. But we can talk about that another day. I actually have a lot of sympathy for Veronique and Baptiste. I can understand the hatred they feel for their father, but that doesn't mean I'll allow them to walk the path of evil, even if it might lead to another sense of justice. Films are different from the real world. They're a form of art and represent the wishes in people's hearts. I adore the Two Musketeers, and I'm very happy to have had the opportunity to act the role as one. I can't wait to catch the film when it premieres in the Opera House. I'm looking forward to seeing the audience's reaction to the climactic ending. Thank you for looking out for me. I'll see you at the award ceremony. I'd be very surprised if we don't win. Have you ever kept... 